It's a rainy day in Paris. Yeah, man, there are a lot of cliche locations in the city that everyone knows about. Champs Elysees, Eiffel Tower, all these cafes and the fashion boutiques. There are also some hidden spots, almost secret, that even many of the locals don't know anything about. And I'm gonna go check them out. So, let's go. The place I'm going to is actually on a very famous street, Rue Mouffetard, which translates to Skunk Street. But this very well-known street hides a secret location which I've never been to so I have to find it myself but it sounds very interesting so I'm curious to see it It's not the best day for filming. I'm looking for the Passage Muftar, which is supposed to be here. It says that there is a narrow door by a souvenir shop at number 52, which is right here, which leads to a secret passage. And this door is obviously not open. Maybe I'll ask this again. Okay. Okay. Hi. Do you speak English? Yes, can I help you? There's a passage, passage Muftar. It says that it's 52. like 52, yeah. You look, I think it's closed. It's closed? Yeah, it's closed. Yeah. It's, it's, not, it's not public? No, because all the time it's open, but you have a, after COVID, you have two doors. Two doors. No possible for open, yeah. Ah. It's a private. Ah, yeah. oh, it's private. All the time it's, uh, it's, uh, it's free. But people, uh, you have a group, 20 people, 25 yeah, yeah. people. It's a come, it's a, uh, you have a close. Yeah. It's permanently closed? It's closed, yeah. So it, it will never be open? I have a code for first. Ah. Do you have a passage code, my friend? Ah, okay, I'll, I'll have a look. What's your name? Laszlo. My name is Sebastian. Where are you come from? From Hungary. Welcome. Thank Special you very much. You, my thank you, thank you. Well, you heard the guy. It's closed now, but this is it. That's all we can see from it. Oh, it's a cobblestone little street with plants. A hidden passageway, I guess. Water, this camera is not waterproof. All right, so that's the passage Muftar, Mufetar. 
All right, man. Let's go to the next location. That was Passage Mufetar, a quirky spot that is definitely not worth seeking out on its own. But if you're in the area, then who knows? You might get lucky and the gates will be open for you. There are these symbols or whatever on many buildings that I see here. I have no idea what they are. These pixelated little figures. I've seen them all over the place. I have no idea what they are. I decided to leave rainy Paris and come to rainy Morocco. Just kidding. This is the Grand Mosque of Paris. And you would be forgiven for thinking you're somewhere in North Africa. Really nice garden. It is quite unbelievable that this is in Paris. Look at that. And this was built by masters, craftsmen from North Africa, so it's 100% authentic. This is a working mosque, by the way. The prayer room is right here. This is the smaller, less impressive garden. These are olive trees. Okay. That's where you do the washing, ablution, it's called. Uh, yeah, so the first stone here was laid in 1922 and it was finished in 1926. And it's modeled after a famous mosque in Fez in Morocco. And they brought artisans, like I said earlier, from North Africa to do all the work. But there, it was a French architect who was the designer. There's the minaret. Yeah, it's, it's completely like in North Africa. It's a pretty large complex. This is a, a fig tree, I can tell.
That's where they do the washing. This is yet another garden. I bet it's much nicer in spring or summer. Obviously, everything is green. Yeah, the weather is not the best for visiting this kind of place, but it's still pretty cool. And there you can see Paris. I don't know what that ugly building is, but when you look around, you can see some buildings which remind you that, yeah, after all, you're not in Morocco or Algeria. I think it's definitely worth checking this place out because it's, it's very nice. And it's very interesting to see it in the middle of Paris. Like there, there's, there's Paris. And there is North Africa. There's a cafe there. I don't know, it seems like it might be closed. But I do smell some nice food. So maybe it is open. <clears throat> a nice warm tea now. Mint tea. North African style wouldn't be bad. Let's see if it's open. I noticed that birds like these kind of places. There's a uh, Alhambra, or the old mosque in Spain, is full of birds as well. They love flying there. Maybe the geometrical shapes, they create some kind of a special atmosphere, energy. But birds always love to flock to these places. Is the cafe open? Yes, all the corner. You go outside. Outside to the, the left. The Grand Mosque, Paris. Hope the umbrella is not blocking the view. There's the minaret. Some Islamic bookshop. And all of that territory. So it's not just a cafe, it's a proper restaurant that I'm not gonna go into now. But it looks... It's very charming. I'm sure in the summer it's, it's nice to sit here. They have you know, a proper restaurant. And this is that side that I was looking at through the garden. <clears throat> Tea house, man, it smells really good. Smaller restaurant. Ah, there's a proper tea house here. Man, this place is pretty cool. There's people in there, I don't want to film them. It's, it's really charming, I have to say, that it's better than what I expected.
The Great Mosque of Paris is definitely worth a visit. And since it's located in the center of the city, close to the botanical garden and other tourist spots, many people will go to this area anyway. On a warm sunny day in the spring or summer, this place is a magical oasis. There's a small fee to enter, three euros, and you can visit every day except Fridays and Islamic holidays. Overall, I was very impressed by it, and I think it's a great testament to that open-minded spirit of Paris that makes it one of the greatest cities on the planet. I don't think the next spot is that much of a secret, but a lot of people don't know about it. It's right here. I take that back. I think a lot of people do know about it. And it's this little red Fiat. Inside this courtyard, we've got the Merci store in the back. Okay, maybe it's not a big secret. But it's pretty cool. Good marketing. Put a little red Fiat there, and it becomes famous. So that was a quick one. The rain is not helping, by the way. That was a quick one indeed. Another one not worth the visit, but at a certain point, it became a thing to make photos with this Fiat. I found it more interesting from a marketing point of view. It's a nice case study in how to build hype out of nothing. Now, that's what I was talking about earlier, but this is a bigger version. These weird pixelated things, man. Put them on the sides of buildings. It's, they're always really high up. You can't just like... You have to bring equipment to put it up there. There's another one. This area, the Mare, is full of these. I really want to know the story behind this been seeing them for years. Like I said, this area is full of them. I bet if I keep going, around the corner there'll be another one. Next spot is here. It might be closed. It's closed. Over. Over. Ah no. Por qual? Solo dimanche? Uh, demain, no? No? Uh, Jordi, Jordi, uh, no, demain. Après demain, ce soir, uh, 
Ah, demain, non. Ok, merci. Weird, man. France is a Catholic country, but the cool thing about Paris is you can find, you know, religious places of worship of all kinds here. And many people don't know, but behind this door is something really cool. supposed to be I already see it check this out that's a Russian Orthodox Church built by Russian immigrants in the 20s and it was burned down in April of 2022 I have a few guesses on who that may have been but now it's back in service. It's not the only Russian Orthodox Church in the city. There's a newer one, which is much bigger. But this one is really charming. And it's, you would never guess that it's here. Oh, look, there's palm trees as well. Nice little garden here. I think it's closed at the moment. And this is an olive tree. This is a nice little garden, man. Even this building, this whole courtyard, it feels a bit like Russia. It's interesting. There's a tree inside. I don't know if the camera picks it up. There are two trees inside and it was consecrated in 1933. I think they started building it in the 20s and it was financed by donations from white emigres who, fred, who fled the Bolshevik Revolution. I don't know if you can see the tree from here. But yeah, there's the white tree, very typical of Russia. Biryoska, I think it's called. Oh, there's a few actually here. A few Biryoskas. Yeah, and it was rebuilt in wood. In 1974, and the services are held in French and Slavonic. This church, similar to the mosque, creates a totally different atmosphere around it. I really felt like I'm in a typical Russian dvor or courtyard when I was there. It exists in its own ecosphere, which I find fascinating. I was actually lucky to get inside because after it was burned down, the gates are always closed. For some reason, they opened for me, but the second time I wanted to go back, I couldn't enter. So you may not be able to visit it even if you want, but perhaps things will have eased up by the time this video comes out. I 
I'm in one of the coolest parks in Paris. This is called Arène de Lutes. And this is a park, but originally this was a Roman gladiator arena dating from the first century. And it was rediscovered, excavated, I think at the end of the 1800s. Check it out. We also got some vines growing here. Too bad about the weather. Just a few minutes ago, I was thinking to put my sunglasses on. Yeah, and the name Lutes, it comes from the fact that in Roman times, the city of Paris was known as Lutes. Imagine. Gladiators actually fought here. In the first century. Imagine, gladiators actually fought here. Maybe this is, this is where they entered the arena. From one of these places. Who knows what kind of battles went on here. Imagine this place is nearly 2,000 years old. This is where the dignitaries used to sit and watch the Christians be fed to the lions. It's a small park, but with a very unique history, that's for sure. I don't know what this statue is. 1321. It's hard to make out what it says. Gabriel de Mortier. I don't know. I don't know what they're doing. But it'd be pretty cool to have your PE class in a Roman gladiator arena that is almost 2,000 years old. I think school is still out. It's the it's the 3rd of January. Maybe it's a drama class or something like that. Theater group. There's a nice acoustic here. It's 
It's starting to rain again. It's like on and off. And this camera is not waterproof, so let me get out. But the metro stop here looks a little bit different from the usual metro stops in Paris. Looks kind of cool as well. What up, birds? You're in a Roman arena, fool. These idiots don't know anything. They don't know the history that is in this place. There we go. It was discovered in 1869 by this guy, Theodor Wacker, 1869. Like I said, the metro stop looks pretty cool. Unusual, different. How cool is it that kids in this area can go play in a 2,000 year old Roman gladiator arena? Where else can you do such things? Come to think of it, in my old neighborhood in Budapest, we had a Roman amphitheater and we biked there as kids. But that one was not as old. In any case, that's also something special. I really like how the city of Paris also just randomly grows vineyards around the city and I really do wonder what they do with the grapes because it's obvious that it's not simply for decoration. In any case, Arène de Lutèce, a really cool place in the heart of Paris. If you're around the Notre Dame and you want to see a quirky, interesting landmark, you don't have to go very far. Rue du Chat qui pêche. The street of the cat who fishes and there are those mosaics. This is the narrowest street in all of Paris. It dates to 1540 when locals used it to go to the Seine to go fishing. And it takes you to this street, full of bars and shops. What more can be said here? It's quirky, it's interesting, and it's in the most touristy area. Yet many people have never heard of it. I think the name is great. The Cat Who Fishes. I wonder who came up with that. Next place is not much of a secret anymore, much to the chagrin of the people that live here. But if you're in the area, I think it's worth checking out. Rue Crémieux, the most colorful street of Paris. When the weather's nice, you see a lot of people taking selfies here, all this Instagram mania happens here and uh, in a way you can understand why locals hate it they want to close it down I mean, in a way I can understand them you know, if people would be out here in front of my window every day I don't think I'd be too happy either it 
So it's not much of a secret, but if you're in the area, I think it's still worth checking out. It's very unusual for Paris. When the weather is good, it has a different vibe. The sun shines on these colorful buildings and it looks different with these plants. Almost has like a Caribbean vibe. Those who have been to Paris will know how out of the ordinary this street looks. It's another one of those closed off ecosystems that exists on its own, unaffected by its surroundings. As I said, it's not much of a secret, but funny enough, Parisians seem to know less about it than tourists. It's gotten so bad actually that local residents have started a petition to close the street off on weekends, in the evening, and at the golden hour. If you're around Gare de Lyon, I think it's worth a visit, especially when the weather is nice. I'm in a place that's particularly liked by photographers. Never been here, so let's check it out. Okay, I can see why. Over there, you got the hustle and bustle of Paris and in here, it's like you're in a little village or something. Look at this. This is known as Le Square Peuplier. Don't make the mistake of putting in the GPS plus the Peuplier because that's in another town outside of Paris. It's very charming. Yeah, it's literally like being in a small little town. Here's a dead end. Square, the Peuplier. It's not a huge area, but it's very, very charming. And, and that's it. I'm, I'm back where I started. It looks cool. One other thing is when you're inside, it's super quiet. And then once you get here to the entrance, you start to hear the noise of the city. So all the way in there, it's really like a village. And then you come here and uh, you're back. I'm sure about the story of this mural, but it looks pretty cool. It's on the corner of Rue du Moulin de Pré and Rue de Tobiac, and the Square de Peuplier is right there. I think it says something there that 10 people who live here, they commissioned this street art on the building. But who these people are and who did it, I don't really know. Ernesto Novo, I think, I think that's what it says there. 
Ernesto Nova was the artist. But who the people are, maybe the people who listen to them. Uh huh, there it says Ernesto Novo. Ah, some kind of street artist, I guess. Yeah, I'm in Paris. Never a dull moment. This whole area is a little bit like a village. Look at these buildings here. That's kind of a village ride. This looks like a interesting passageway. Charming little area. And by the way, there is that pixelated mosaic stuff again. It's all over the city, man. And a little plant thingy. Made out of mirrors. Now, I really want to know who's doing this stuff. Little street art. Now, that's the thing about Paris. You can never fully discover this city. You're always going to find like some little or big stuff that is new there's so many things here once again let me reiterate do not put in the gps the usual french name for square plus because this spot is strangely called square de peuplier I nearly drove off to some other town 45 minutes from Paris because of this. It's very interesting how you step inside the cobblestone street that forms this triangular area and once again you're in another world. It really is very quiet in there and serene. The architecture and the plant life is also strikingly different from its surroundings. I found the whole area to be quite interesting and off the beaten path. I'm in the Marais district, in the heart of Paris, in the middle of the big city, but I'm going to a village. A village right here. This is Paris, and this is St. Paul village. A real actual village that used to be the, the garden of a king, I think George V, he had a garden here and farmers built a village here and then it was restored at a certain point and now it's a separate little ecosystem here. You enter here and it's a different world, full of little cafes, workshops, a totally different vibe than on the other side of the street, basically. A 
There are 10 entrances like that, which lead into this rectangle shaped area, which looks like that. Here it says, uh, la, 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 la. Okay, it doesn't say the history there. Anyway, this is it. St. Paul's Village in the heart of Paris. And even here they got that mosaic stuff, man. Look at the difference. Here it's fairly quiet. If I go out from the gate... This is already the Marais, typical Paris. I'm gonna go back to the village here. Antique shops. Yeah, it's a lot busier in the summer, of course. Now it's pretty empty. It's early in the morning. Little courtyards. Okay, here we go with the tourists. There's another gate. back another way so this here is the village here it's already not the village but my favorite part is right here coming up this sports complex technically the village is there behind those buildings but this is sort of part of it as well and you got the old wall here man it's really cool to play sports next to this old wall special vibe and if we go this way we can just go back to the village I had enough of the city life I want to go to the village man so I'm gonna take a left here ah, yes I'm in the village again Quiet here. Sounds like people live here. Oh, of course they do. What am I saying? They must live up there. Yeah, it's quiet here, man like tranquil there's like a different vibe a little more mosaic here not really i have to figure out who's doing this it's everywhere yeah so this is it the village of saint paul in the mare
I said it wrong, man. It was Charles V, the king, who built it. That was his ancient garden. Or rather, it was his garden, and it was restored by Félix Gatier from 1970 to 1981. So it was Charles V garden, and villagers came here to plant stuff because the soil was really good here. So it became a village. And this is, I think this is a red fern. The trees that you have in California that live extremely long. Here there's a maquette. That's what the village looks like. And I suppose photos of how it was restored. Yeah, it's not such a secret location, but it's not one of those places where most first-time tourists will go. But it is in the heart of the city. It's very easy to access. And it's kind of hidden, you know? Like, if you don't know about it, you're going to walk by this and, and not know that there's a village here in between, you know, some main streets where there's a lot of action. And here's the sports complex. This has to be the coolest playground and man I just I fell on I slipped on this thing I tried to run up check on my jacket and my pants I like this wall Got a village here. You can come play ball here, man. I would have loved to play basketball growing up in a place like this. With all this history surrounding you. And it's just, I don't know, man. It has a really good vibe, this court here. I know what this wall is it's, it's not part of the village this was built by Philip August in 1190 when he went on the Crusades to protect the city it was nine meters tall 70 meters long and yeah that's where it ends here it's already something else that's, that makes this court even cooler. Seeing that I was recording this on the 4th of January 2024, the place was quite empty and devoid of action. In the spring and summer, the atmosphere is quite different. In any case, this area is not so much about looking at historic things, but rather it's a neat idea to preserve a special location and provide a space for artisans, small handicraft stores, and a place to escape from the hustle and bustle that is literally just a few meters away. For me personally, it's all about that playground that is next to the village. There's something very special about it.
front of me is, in my opinion, the weirdest building complex in all of Paris. It's called... I forgot what it's called. Uh, something with Flanders. Here it says the Gate of Flanders, but the building complex is called... Organ, or organs of Flanders. Anyway, have a look. Look at that. Look at that. Brutalist architecture. Really weird and interesting. Let's have a closer look. It was designed by some famous architect. I didn't look into it that deeply. It's pretty wild. And unfortunately, it's in a really bad area. One of the worst areas of Paris, so it's very unkept. Look at this. Here. This whole area is really, it's one of the worst places in Paris. But this building is really interesting from an architectural point of view. I wonder how it is inside, if it's anything special. There are some other buildings here that are a little bit out of the ordinary for Paris. It's really, really something else. It reminds me of Brazil. Architecture it can be found in Brazil in big numbers, and somehow it's really unlike Paris, that's for sure. I think these buildings are also part of the same complex. I mean, built by the same architect, I believe. They're really, really high buildings, man. Paris does not have that too much. Too bad it's in such a bad area. Here's the main entrance in the middle. This building is weird. Right across the street, there's normal Paris, the typical Paris architecture. And here it's like, it's an island of something totally different. 
why don't they build interesting things like this anymore? Or they experiment with new types of architecture. Everything's the same now. Maybe this is not everyone's cup of tea, but at least it's something different. It's something creative. The architect really left his imprint on the city. They gave him a chance to be creative. If you're an architect today, what can you do? Glass, steel, tall, that's it, goodbye. And maybe you can do a little shape. That's a bit different and that's about it. Oh look, there's a, there's a pool here. This is a sports center. But this building is part of the complex because it also looks brutalist and strange. Oh, look at the trash here. Look, there's a toilet in the, in the middle of the street. Not the best part of Paris, that's for sure. Alright, I think that's all there is to see here. I wonder what the story with this arc is. Maybe it's historic. Let's see, there's a plaque here. Uh, I don't know. There's trash everywhere, man. It's a shame. some guys across the street that started approaching me quietly they saw that I'm filming they're right there across one of them started creeping up on me right before I left but yeah it's a bad area man definitely a bad area I definitely do not advise anyone to visit this area at night it really is in one of the worst areas of the city. I have a separate video on this channel on the most dangerous parts of Paris, and this building is in one of those neighborhoods. That being said, this complex of buildings, which dates back to the mid-70s and is the work of German architect Martin van Trek, is truly very impressive. The first time I saw it, I was in a cab arriving from the airport, and all of a sudden, amongst the typical Osmani and Paris architecture, this utopian structure appeared, like some kind of alien creature, and it completely mesmerized me. As I said earlier, Paris is a city you cannot ever fully discover. There are so many layers and so many hidden, or let's say not well-known, yet super interesting places that even after 15 years of going there multiple times every single year, I still discover a lot of new things every time I'm there. In this video, I presented just a few lesser known locations, some less secret than others. But nonetheless, I advise everyone to visit Paris. Don't listen to the people that criticize it. And lately, I've heard a lot of YouTubers make these videos about why Paris is not nice and all that kind of stuff. Maybe some of those criticisms are warranted on some level, but if that is all these people got out of this city, then that says something about them. If you cannot see the beauty in Paris, I think something's wrong with you. I'm not a Parisian, but I do have a soft spot for this city and I will defend it. As far as those mosaics I kept talking about, well, here's the story. I finally found out. It's the work of a formerly anonymous French artist called Invader, whose real name and identity was only revealed a few years ago. His pixelated street art, inspired by classic video games, is a way, according to him, of putting art back to where it belongs, among the people, instead of it being in sterile and cold environments such as museums. And honestly, I really could not agree more with that sentiment. 
He's been placing his guerrilla art around Paris for the past 20 odd years. And recently, his work has started to be so appreciated that it's even being sold in auction houses. The fact that his art is not only not being taken down, but is being celebrated to the point where the city filed a complaint against thieves who took down some of Invader's work. I think this is a great example of the spirit of Paris and what makes it so cool and so damn interesting.